Hello, everyone. This is From Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodwill. Over there, we have John. Hi, John. How's your summer? Uh, been up and down, but for the most part, good. Yeah, I know uh, summer this year for us has been in particularly just from a level, of, and I, I think I speak for just me and you, um, financially strenuous. Right. <laughs> um just on what we're dealing with there um so uh there's some things going on there um I, on my end i have um, my kids are a couple uh, my two boys are having health issues so gotta take care of them first um so that's why i haven't been on camera a whole lot and me and john needed a well-needed vacation because we we john came in we hit the ground running and never really took a break right um, we took this as uh uh the Draft happened, and we decided that we were just going to take a vacation. We saw everything that happened. We talked about everything that happened. Um, we talked about working a couple times and uh, and then doing this. And um, I think we made the right decision on not <laughs> All right. at that time. Um, beyond that, uh, not a whole lot. Uh, welcome back again for our their fourth season. Hockey Locker, uh, 202 West Hart Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at 414-800-7585. All righty. So, well, beyond our, their website, hockeylockermilwaukee.com. <laughs> yeah. Also, you can check them out, Hockey Locker Milwaukee on eBay. Um, or check out their store. Right across the street from Wilson Park, if you're in the local area. All right, but why we're here? Well, we're gearing up for another season. Jo I'm going to leave the floor here with John for a moment to kind of give you an update on what's going to be happening in the beginning of our season as far as uh, when we start probably around uh, the 30th of August or so, we're going to be really, really kind of working in the well, John's been working in the graphic department all summer. <laughs> yeah, I, I, from graphics, I haven't taken a break, so. We needed a break from. <clears throat> on camera. Guys, but this being on camera. All right, so, yeah. Uh, basically, August 30th, we're going to be starting to drop some new graphics and an anniversary graphic because it will be our fifth anniversary on August 30. And so we have some cool things coming, some different stuff for our social media, um, some things for the fans as well. I haven't finished working on yet, but they're getting close to being done. Um, we'll have some wallpapers. Check out um, every Wednesday right now. Right now we're on the Milwaukee Admirals wallpaper series. And I think we have one or two more of those to drop, and then we'll be dropping a couple of Preds ones. <clears throat> so, right. right. So we have some cool wallpapers coming your way. Also, um, big ups and thank yous to uh, TNT Racing this year for sticking it out with us all these years. Um, yep. Their car since this will be our fourth season on their car. Um, we're not looking to give that up anytime soon as well. <laughs> Uh, but um, it's been quite the off season for me, at least. Um, lots of this. <laughs> yeah, I'm learning how to deal with that. It's really weird. Best of life advice I could ever give someone: birthdays aren't important. <laughs> Patience is important too. Birthdays are not important because all you're doing is leveling up in life. It just gets harder. We all say we hope this next year gets easier. It doesn't. So that's yeah. kind of been where we're been at. Not to be a Debbie Doubter or anything, but we got good news. As one of the many reasons in which why we're here, we kind of slacked on all the off-season breakdown. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and I figured, well, me and him had some time today, and, you know... 
we'll give you guys some content. So I actually do have some for you. Not nothing relatively new. Outside of this yesterday, Alex Whelan signs with the Atlanta Gladiators. Oh, yes, Atlanta. Welcome to the family. Yeah. Um, we have not been on camera since Atlanta has joined. So, Atlanta, welcome to the family. Thank you, guys. All you Atlanta fans that do come through, thank you so much. All right. So, Alex Whelan signed with Atlanta. He's 26. Uh, six foot, shoots right-handed. Uh, he Last year, he kind of was... A little bit of everywhere. Um, he played for the Hartford Wolfpack for 23 games, three goals, or sorry, two goals, three assists, five points. He played three games for Jacksonville where he had two points, or sorry, two goals, two assists, four points. And then Cleveland, he played 19 games and he had one goal, four assists, five points. So this year he's going to be with Atlanta. Um, he did play two years with Hartford. He had 16 points in his first full season, and then the year he signed, he had three points in 10 games. So he's not a horrible player at the AHL level. Right. Uh, style of play seems to look like he's just a basic two-way hockey player. So, there's that. Um... Derek Nesbitt being their star player, who, oddly enough, if I remember 100% correctly, is also their head coach. Yep, he is. Uh, he is one of their, he was their retired number as well. One of the, I think there's two. Uh, there's three, Andy Brandt and Cam Brown. I know who Cam Brown is. But their team looks like they have uh, Tyler Harmon and, and Nett out of uh, Jonesville, Minis uh, Jonesville, Michigan. Um, Adam Samuelson, six foot six defenseman. He's 23 out of White Plains, New York. Uh, Zach Yoder out of uh, Woodstock, Georgia. He's five, six five. Um, so they've got some some pretty big bodies. Uh, Bray Crowder. He's six six. Um, Cody Sylvester. They have him. He's been a pretty good point getter for them for years. Um, probably the next number I see them retiring. Uh, but that's just the general of what I know about Atlanta, Milwaukee. Hi, Admirals fans. Y'all know me well. All righty. Let's get into some of the AHL contracts first here. We got Griffin Luce. Griffin Luce last year played for... The... Looks like Springfield Thunderbirds. Yep. 19 games, 3 assists. Year before he played uh forty five games had four assists he had forty eight penalty minutes so he's a little it looks like he had a little bit of bump to him when he played in the A he also had eight penalty minutes in nineteen games so I'm not sure but. His uh, grandfather played for the Salt Lake Golden Eagles. If you know, you know. His grandfather, Don Luce. Um, But it'll be interesting to see how he does. Um, in his career, he has a World Juniors 18, I believe that to be... Yeah, U18 uh, bronze in 2016 and silver in 2015 or 2014-2015. They won the uh, WHC silver medal and he won. He was part of the U18 World Junior bronze medal team. 
Carson Gisowicz or Gisowicz, depending on how you pronounce it. 26 years old, Orchard Park, New York, right outside of Buffalo. I know exactly where that is. 6'3", shoots right-handed, 2'12". Admirals fans, we're pretty familiar with the guy. Uh, he played for Rockford for three years and then got traded during the trade deadline to Rochester where he played three games. Um, last year he had four goals, two assists, and six points with the ISOs. Callahan Patrick O'Reilly. Welcome back. Um, before I get into that, um, when we brought in Cal, what was your thought initially that we brought him back? Um, I don't know. It was, uh, it was a little bit of excitement and, um, not just for the fans, because I liked him when he played here uh, in his first time here. But um, it should really help with the leadership of the team. I, I'd agree there. I mean, no, no shot at Cole Snyder. None taken at all. Um, best of luck with you to the Wolves. Have fun over there. All right. Um. Uh, Cole Snyder uh, signed with the Wolves during the offseason. Um, but, like, from the way I look at it, um, it would have been interesting to see how his dynamic would have fit into our system last year. Right. We, we had so much at one point in time that we were benching guys, you know, bench guys in and out in the right. playoffs, trying to figure out what combinations worked. Against what against which teams? Right. Um, you know, and last year for the Lehigh Valley Phantoms, uh, he was their captain. He's been the captain of the Rochester Americas, Rochester Americans, Utica Comets, Iowa Wild, and the Lehigh Valley Phantoms for the last three years. So it wouldn't be outside of the realm of possibility that he becomes the captain here. Right. Um, his brother is also in the system. I'll get to that shortly. Um, in his time as an admiral, um, he was averaging about 40 points a season. Yeah. Except for the one part where he played like two games <laughs> when he came over from the Windsor Spitfires. Right. 99 points his last year in 2005. Oh, God, I feel old. <laughs> 2005, 2006. Um, you know, it's, if, if this is our last spot for him... Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm truly happy to have him back. Another one we have, I think this is a Fred, yep, this is a Fred signed contract. We're getting into those now. Um, uh, Bertardi got Anthony Angelo, uh, Adam Willsby, most likely Luke Prokop. Joining us most likely will be Jack Batier, Kevin Graval, and Mark Del Geizo. Also signing, so those are the guys, you know, Pro Cop we saw a little bit of last year. Uh, Matier ought to be interesting to see. Um, Graval and Del Geizo, we know what they're capable of. Willsby, we know what he's capable of. Thompson, we know what he's capable of. And not capable of. I'm not getting off of that just yet. But hopefully he worked on that during the offseason. Never know. Um, but uh, the newcomers, like Zachary LaRue, I've been looking forward to that for years since we drafted him. It's been two years, uh, and we've waited. You know? Um, but Jasper Weatherby uh, is another one we brought, the Preds brought in pretty much an AHL contract. Uh, last year with uh, San Jose, at one point he had Three goals and three assists in six games. 
San Jose was not good at all last year. Yeah. And then he got traded through, I believe, San Jose and Detroit made a trade. And he got sent to the Griffins. Where he had three points, or three goals, 11 assists, or three goals, eight assists, 11 points. Sorry. Rust. Also, for those of you confused, there's something new this year. Uh... Yeah. So, yeah, Jasper Weatherby has an average of 15 points per season. But best season is with the... Uh, oh, he had 11 points with the Sharks in the NHL in 2021-22. Um, Goose. You know, and, and when we were talking about bringing people back, you know, I'm going with Devin Cooley. Uh-huh. Of Buffalo. You know? And I think that when you I don't know, when you look at what the Admirals are acquiring, all right. When it comes to Grosnick, a serviceable backup at the A, serviceable starter at the A. So we don't have to worry about that issue at all, especially with guys like Yarrow. And I believe we have another goalie in the wing. But I'm not uh, 100% sure. Um, but just looking at it from that, that kind of perspective, I should say, um, okay. All right, there we go. I get it. All right, so um, um, <clears throat> those are just the guys under contract at the NHL or at the Admirals and what Elite Prospect has for potential roster as far as that is concerned. Um. Fortunately for the Admirals, um, that's not all we're getting. <laughs> so it looks like Fedor Svechkov's going to join us. Jokub Kettlebell's going to join us. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see if Reed Schaefer joins us. Nolan Burke is going to join us. Uh, Joachim Kondalik will be returning this year. Never mutter for his second season. Anthony Angelo resigned for two years. Uh, Michael McCarron is also back. I'm sure I wouldn't be surprised to see him in Milwaukee, as well as Jasper Weatherby, like I said earlier. Um, defensively, you have signed. These are the guys that are just signed that can come to the, that, you know, most likely we'll go through this system again. Um, you have uh, Tanner Molendike, uh, one of the picks Nashville picked in the most recent draft. Spencer Stastny, Mark Delgaizo, Adam Willsby, Jack Matier, Luke Prokop, Jake Livingstone, Kevin Graval, Jordan Gross, and Roland McEwen. That's 10 defensemen signed to contracts. Yeah. Yaroslav Iskarov and Troy Grosnick. 
Um, coming in this year for the Preds. Uh, Luke Shen. Ah. All righty. So Luke Shen, um, thirty three, six two, shoots right handed. He has two Stanley Cups to his credit. Twenty twenty and twenty twenty one. In which those seasons I believe he played for Yep, Tampa Bay. It's been an interesting thing, though, because Luke Shed has been one of those guys who plays at both levels of the ice. So he has been sent to the AHL a couple times in his career. Yeah. Um, To get that one going. Um, he definitely had some grit on that defensive line. Um. I'm interested to see what happens there. Dennis Kiranov, 26 years old, out of Togolana, Russia, 6'3", 205. Never has really lived up to the hype. He just hasn't. Let's see what Nashville can do with him. It would be interesting to see how an interesting turn of play comes here. Because this guy is playing for Montreal and Dallas, which is the same <laughs> the same situation in which the Alexander uh, Alexander Radilov went, but in reverse. Right. It went Montreal, then Dallas. But first, he was drafted by Nashville. This guy was drafted by da Dallas, traded to Montreal, and then signed with us. So it's turnaround fully of the Alexander Radulov thing with another Russian hockey player. Not throwing any shade, but I would love to see what he could do given full confidence. Do I really have to talk about Gustav Nyquist? I mean, if you don't know, the dude's a pretty consistent 20 point scorer every season. He's, I mean, in 2021, he had 53 points. Last year, he had a whopping 22 with Columbus, and Columbus was just garbage. Yeah. And then he went to Minnesota three games. That's all he played. Three games. Had four assists, one goal, five points, and a plus two. In the playoffs, he had five assists and a plus four. So, I mean, it's just another one of those players. Mm -hmm. I remember how I said that. Cal O'Reilly's brother was in the system. Hi, Ryan O'Reilly. Drafted 2009 second round, 33rd overall by the Colorado Avalanche. Signed a, I believe it was a four-year, $4.5 million deal, which is a team deal. That's a team deal. Um, career accolades. 
has been Lady Bing finalist. 2013, 2014 season, 2017, 2018 season, 2018, 2019 season, along with the Conn Smythe Trophy, Stanley Cup, Selkie, and our Selkie Trophy finalists. Last year, All Star, Lady Bing finalist, Selkie finalist. In 2020, he won that award. Or yeah. won nominated for those awards as well. So um in, clo in closing his skill set on the ice is face offs team player leadership. From what you would gather from the trophies he's winning. The Selkie Trophy is for the best defensive forward. And the Lady Bing is sportsmanship. Those, those, I, I mean, I'll take that. Yeah. That's hardware coming, coming this way. And that's a good thing. This guy knows how to win. He's been in these situations. Uh, was the captain of the Blues for three years. Um... Last year kind of had a rough go with the Blues, but the Blues didn't have the greatest season. And I'm sure the Blues are not exactly happy with the Maple Leafs seeing that he's back in their division. <laughs> so, um, with the Maple Leafs, he played 13 games and had 11 points. And then in the playoffs, went absolutely insane with 11 games, 9 points. In the playoffs, to get close to a point per game is insane. The yeah. year that he won the, won the cup, he had 26 games played and had 23 points. Like, the guy is is reliable. Right. Like we've lacked in a first spot center, like, forever now. Um, But... Let's just talk about a little bit more about this because because we've kind of broke this down all the way now. <laughs> right. Because the people we haven't mentioned, well, those are the guys we're charting. Um, you know, so the one thing when we sit here and talk about this, there's two things we should really talk about going into this season. One. Has Will Dante Fabro finally improved? Will he meet that that cap? That or the the oh sorry, not the cap. Yeah, there's the rust. Um, the height in which that followed him coming out of college. Will he ever meet that? And, and and this is the year he has to do that. Second part, Parsonen, can he repeat what he did last year? Right. Better. I know he was injured for a while. Can Tomasino make the next step? Is Evangelista ready for a full-time NHL game? All questions we have to ask ourselves going into this season. It, can Juice still carry this team? Is Forsberg consistent enough for that eight million dollar, eight point five million dollar contract? All things that will be answered when they hit the ice. But for the time being, that is all we have. All right. So we have what roughly like. Month or so till training camp, roughly. Yeah. Um, you know, not ours like the Admirals, but Nashville's camp. And I know for the time being, me and you are still working on some of the summer stuff and all this stuff. But I'm kind of looking forward to hockey a little bit just for the distraction purpose of how stressful stuff is. Uh -huh. So, um, but yes, yeah, so we so we have new graphics coming um in the next fifteen days. So fifteen days. Um 
congratulations to Kale McCarr on uh, the, gracing the cover of uh, NHL 24, the last defenseman to be on the cover. Before that is P.K. Subban. Yeah. Which he was donning a Preds jersey. They must like Central Division defensemen. <laughs> uh -huh. Why not Roman? Roman's been a finalist for the last decade, it feels like. Every year, they're always like, let's do this, let's do this. But I say put a goalie on it next year. Igor Shostorkin has earned that right. There are some goalies, Andre Vasilevsky. I won't, I won't say Saros until he wins back-to-back -back fans. So they've both done that. But not that I'm saying that. I'm just saying from a marketing perspective, NHL's not going to do it without that happening. Right. A market, NHL, NHL, EA, whatever you want to call them. Uh, well, and hey, 2K, make a hockey game so we can have some competitive hockey again. Um, But no, other than that, I think things have been going pretty solid around around the hockey world, which is why we haven't had to do a whole lot. Right. And it's, uh, as they say, for hockey fans, the dead of summer. <laughs> Stupid thing. Just remember, when you're having private conversations, always unplug your Echo Dot. You never know who's listening. <laughs> Right. No conspiracy theories here. Je just Jeff Bezos trying to tell us what to buy because he's listening to our conversations. <laughs> mm -hmm. If you know, you know, and it's a joke, so don't take me serious. All right. Everything before I got into this whole spiel, you can take that serious because hockey I take serious. This part, we're having fun. Right. About fun. Um, I I am coming back to the Admirals this year as a half, as my family, as I said, my kids have health issues. Uh, that takes precedent, but I still want to go to games, so I'm going to find time in between all that to make games. Um, but that's just where I'm at, and like I said, it's been kind of financially strenuous for our group this summer, so making games, even from that perspective, is hard. So we don't know where we're going to be at next year. All we know is this this thing's kicking. It's alive and kicking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just, are we? <laughs> um, also, thank you to um, uh, Garrett and quite a few others. I uh, I will say one thing um uh, about what we have had going on. I have some people to thank. And if you people will bear with me, so I don't have to do this in another video, because <laughs> we have a limited time here. Oh, uh, well, he's finding that. Thank you to all the organizations for letting us do this for another year. Yeah, I, I agree. Also, congratulations to Ryan Costello on being uh, promoted to Assistant General Manager of the Milwaukee Admirals. Lucas Ellis is the Head of Equipment and Jason Barron, our new Head Goalie Coach. Yeah. Congratulations to those guys as well. Um, as from Milwaukee into Nashville enters our fifth year, I would love to thank some of the people that got us to where we are. Um, one of the big ones uh, of being where we are, and, and I'm so grateful for it, and to you guys, the fans. Yeah. Uh, without that, without you guys, it's it's borderline impossible to do this. Uh. Uh, 
I am really trying hard here, and it is not giving me what I want. Because <laughs> they got to go changing Facebook every 20 seconds. Yes, yes, they do. Yeah, like, you can't find your top fan badge anymore. Yeah, I don't even know how to find that anymore. Uh, 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 all right. <laughs> Alrighty, folks. We have a thank you. It's going to come out as its own private video. We've been trying to find it. I will locate it, and then we'll get a video then. So, I, the the top fans of our page, you are all getting a personal thank you coming soon.